You know, when you think about what a pilot needs in the cockpit, you probably picture high-tech screens, a complex yoke, maybe a fancy GPS. But today, we're gonna talk about something way more fundamental. It's a document that by law has to be within arm's reach for anyone flying one of the most popular planes ever built. It's just a book, the Pilot's Operating Handbook for the Cessna 172. And right from the very first page, it doesn't mess around. This isn't just a friendly tip or a good idea. This notice, printed in every single handbook, lays down the law. This book, the POH as pilots call it, isn't just recommended reading. It's a legal requirement. It's the absolute final word on everything about that specific airplane. So here's our flight plan for this explainer. First, we're gonna dig into why this book is so important, why it's called the pilot's Bible. Then, we'll see how it defines the plane's very soul through hard data. We'll look at the strict rules of flying, walk through the checklist for a totally normal day, and then we'll see how this book becomes a lifeline when things go very, very wrong. So what is this thing really? Well, it's way more than just a user manual. Think of it as the aircraft's DNA, a legal document and a life-saving tool all rolled into one. It has every single procedure, every limitation, every performance number you can think of, and it's all been approved by the aviation authorities. For the pilot, if there's ever a question about the plane, this book is the final answer, period. Okay, so how does the POH actually describe this flying machine? It doesn't use poetry. It uses numbers, hard, cold, non-negotiable data that paints a complete picture of the airplane's identity and its absolute limits. And these numbers aren't just for trivia night. They literally define the world in which that aircraft is allowed to safely exist. Let's start with this, 14,000 feet. This is the plane's service ceiling. Now, that's not the highest it could possibly go if you pushed it. It's actually the maximum altitude where it's guaranteed to still be able to climb at a specific, safe rate. So, in a way, this number defines the upper boundary of the plane's world. And here's the muscle. The heart of the Cessna 172 is a Textron Lycoming engine that kicks out 180 brake horsepower. That's the real usable power that actually gets to the propeller. It's the raw force that fights against gravity and drag to pull the plane right through the sky. It's the engine's soul, quantified. So what do you get from that horsepower right after you take off? You get this, 730 feet per minute. That's its rate of climb at sea level on a standard day. This number is critical. It tells a pilot exactly how fast they can get up and away from the ground, clear any obstacles, and get to a safe cruising altitude. And this table right here? This is where the rubber meets the road, literally. Look at takeoff. You need 960 feet of runway for the wheels to leave the ground, sure. But, and this is the important part, you need a total of 1,630 feet to make it over a 50-foot obstacle like some trees at the end of the runway. Pilots use these exact numbers. There is absolutely no guesswork allowed. Now, this might be the single most important calculation a pilot makes, the center of gravity. See, it's not a fixed point. It moves around with every person that gets in, every bag you load, and even with every gallon of fuel you burn off. Before every single flight, the pilot has to do the map to make sure this balance point is within the safe zone defined in the POH. If it's too far forward or too far back, the plane could become impossible to control. Okay, so we've got a feel for the plane's capabilities. Now, let's talk about the rules. This part of the POH is basically the law book for this aircraft. And these aren't suggestions. They are the hard and fast boundaries that protect the plane structure and make sure it stays controllable, keeping everyone inside safe. And get this, the rules can actually change depending on how you've loaded the plane. In the normal category, it's just your standard airplane for getting from A to B. But if you empty out the back seats and the baggage area, you shift that center of gravity, and now you can fly it in the utility category. This unlocks more advanced maneuvers, like spins, which pilots actually need to practice for some ratings. It's the same plane, but a completely different set of rules, all laid out in the POH. Even in a modern cockpit with these beautiful glass screens, the POH is still the boss. It says right here, you are prohibited from using the fancy traffic map or the terrain map as your primary way to avoid hitting things. They're just for awareness. The pilot's own eyes are what really counts. It's a great reminder that no matter how good the tech gets, the fundamental skills of flying come first. All right, let's move on to the pilot's best friend on a normal, uneventful day, the normal procedure section. This is where the POH gives you the script 
the checklist for every routine part of the flight. These checklists are the absolute bedrock of aviation safety. They make sure you never forget a critical step, even if you've done it a thousand times before. Here's a perfect example, a simple one sentence rule that is so, so important. By putting the fuel selector on both, the engine draws fuel from both wing tanks at the same time. This simple little action prevents the engine from quitting because one tank ran dry during the most dangerous parts of the flight, takeoff and landing. It's a tiny rule that has saved an unbelievable number of lives. Ah, the magneto check. This is a classic pre-flight ritual. See, the engine has two separate ignition systems. They're called magnetos for redundancy. It's a huge safety feature. And this checklist has you test each one methodically. You're looking for a small expected drop in the engine's RPMs on each one. If the drop is too big or if there's no drop at all, that means something's wrong and you are not taking off. It's this precise little dance and the POH calls the steps. And that brings us to the part of the book every pilot knows inside and out, but prays they never have to use, emergency procedures. This is where this dry technical manual suddenly becomes this calm, clear voice in your ear during a moment of total chaos, giving you the exact steps you need to take to survive. Those two words, they're enough to make any pilot's blood run cold. When that engine goes silent, your training takes over. But guess where that training comes from? It all starts right here, in the pages of this book. It gives you the clear, step-by-step -step actions to either try and fix the problem or to set up for a forced landing. And some of these procedures are completely counterintuitive. An engine fire while you're starting up, your first instinct might be to run, but the POH says the first thing to do is keep cranking the engine. Why? Because if the engine starts, it can actually suck the fire back into the cylinders and put it out. If it doesn't start, then you move on to starving it of fuel. You would never guess that. It's proven wisdom for a moment of sheer panic. And here's another one pilots have to burn into their memory, a spin. That's when the plane's wings aren't flying anymore and it's spiraling towards the ground. The recovery requires these very specific, deliberate actions. And look at step four. You have to push the control wheel forward. Pushing the nose down when you're already headed down sounds terrifying, but it's the only way to get the wings flying again. Every single step here comes directly from this handbook. So when you get right down to it, the POH isn't just a book. It's the collected wisdom of thousands of engineers and test pilots. It's all the hard lessons learned over decades of flying, all put down on paper. It's the pilot's most trusted partner in the cockpit, giving them the data, the rules, and the answers they need to fly with confidence. It really makes you think, doesn't it? With all the incredible glass screens, the autopilots, the moving maps, could it be that the single most important instrument on the flight deck is still the one made of paper and ink, sitting quietly in the side pocket, just waiting to do its job, 